Okay, the US got there first. With the official presentation of the B-21 Raider at the end of 2022, the United States have shown that the first sixth generation bomber will be American. But this is not a race that you win if you cross the line ahead of the others. This is a race that never stops. In my perception, the B-2 was always one of a kind. A niche platform whose job was to hit very difficult and high paying targets. And when the rumors surfaced that China and Russia were actually considering building a stealth bomber, it was sort of the mid-2000s, well, I thought it was the just usual technology race. Even if you have no targets to hit, the technology advancement required for such a project is a reason good enough to pursue it. The job of precision attack of high paying targets is increasingly becoming a business for ballistic and cruise missiles. A piloted platform is more versatile and comes with added benefits, like acting as an ISR platform or a network node. But where the target is known and unmovable, and many strategic targets actually are, long-range weapons often do a better job with less risk involved. Obviously, if you combine the two, if you combine stealth and long-range weapons, well, that's where the game becomes interesting. In 2009, the Russian Ministry of Defense awarded Tupolev for the first research and development contract for a future stealth bomber. In 2011, the United States Air Force started the LRS B program that in the end will evolve into the B-21 Raider. In 2016, the Chinese Air Force announced that they had been working on a stealth bomber for some time. Of all these programs, only the B-21 is known to be in an advanced state, and we have already discussed this aircraft in another video on the channel, link above and below. The Russian aircraft, the Pak da seem to be more or less on schedule according to the news that have been released. In particular, the engine seems to be ready and the prototype is being assembled. The first flight was planned for 2023, but it's difficult to say if the current situation is going to delay the program. It seems that the acquisition of the new Tupolev 160 M2 is obviously taking precedence, but it isn't clear if this is going to strain Tupolev resources and delay the Pak da by the way, I find quite interesting that Russia could resume without too many problems the production of a bomber for an order of just 50 units, while the United States considered impossibly expensive to resume the F-22 production. This is good food for thought. The status of the Chinese H-20 is unknown. The occasional picture, the occasional render do emerge, but we really don't know what the Chinese are doing. Satellites took a picture of what seemed to be a mock-up for electromagnetic interference tests, and that's probably the most reliable piece of information that we have on this program. A screenshot from an alleged TV program actually has circulated outside China. It was showing part of a large aircraft that looked like a stealth bomber. It could have been a technology demonstrator, but many analysts believe that the picture is not authentic. It actually looks real, but probably is just very good computer graphics. Xi'an Group, which is building the aircraft, also took the trouble to troll Northrop Grumman, publishing a picture very similar to the one Northrop Grumman used to tease the reveal of the B-21. Sir, I am vibrantly protesting this decision. No, Otis, you are not hacking anyone's computer, whatever the nationality may be. We keep making videos about aircraft that have very little confirmed news, and you are forbidding me to investigate with my connections. Because I'm pretty sure that this house will be the first target of those bombers if you do. Oh, I understand. Sir, you have a problem with the landlord. I hate to admit it, but Otis is right. We know nothing about these aircraft. But there seems to be one element that they all have in common, range. The Americans with the B-21 are building the aircraft for the Pacific theater. There is no point denying it, it is the current rivalry with China that is driving several American new developments. 
in the Pacific theater, US bases will be few and far between. Most of the potential key targets that may require a stealth platform will be on mainland China. So, unrefueled range with a decent payload is definitely an important design parameter. The Russians are going with an extremely long range. They declared 12,000 kilometers or 30 hours of endurance with a crew of four. It is a lot. It's not impossible, particularly with a flying wing, but I would expect they will have to settle for something less than less. However, we can safely assume that the range will be very long. The design range for the Chinese H-20 has been estimated at 8,500 kilometers uh, based on the interpretation of what the Chinese declared. It is reasonable and definitely quite a long range. And by the way, guys, I am metric, so please get used to it. Now, what a 8,500 kilometers range in a stealth bomber are going to give you. Flying out from the Kola Peninsula and down into the Atlantic, the entire east coast of the United States is in range of a cruise or an aeroballistic missile launch by a stealth bomber. Flying out of Kamchatka and through the Pacific, the entire west coast is in range of the same weapons. And remember, in the current situation, Russia and China are basically allies, and this is not going to change anytime soon. An hypothetical 12,000 km range will put almost all the rest of the continental United States at risk flying from the south through the Caribbean or through Mexico. And of course the polar route is always an option, but there is where most of the American defenses are. So even more important would be the possibility of flying south and refueling in a safe base somewhere in South America. In this case, there will be no corner of the North American continent outside reach. In the context of an extensive conflict lasting more than a few weeks, I personally can see the usefulness of attacking some high pain target on American soil. I'm not going to list them, that would be a different video, but you can easily imagine. All of this without having ballistic missiles in the air and not risking a nuclear conflict. And remember, these are stealth platforms, so you will need to be quite close to engage them. You need a pretty dense mesh of sensors on a continental scale to waterproof the United States. China and Russia, having had to counter stealth for 30 years, are actually building it. And a lot of that is already in place, but the United States, understandably, <laughs> didn't build anything. What I'm trying to say is that a sizable fleet of stealth bombers in the hands of Russia or China could be the first crack in one of the main military assets of the United States. It's isolation between two oceans. Thank you so much for getting this far in the video, particularly if you are American. And an enormous thank you to all those who are supporting the channel by one-off donations on PayPal, by being a member or on Patreon. You can also support the channel by buying a model from Air Models. There will be an affiliate link below. I will have a small percentage and there will be no extra cost for you. If you're new here, well, welcome. And you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. This is helping a lot. And if you like this video, please leave a like. That's appreciated as well. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.